Well, well, what do we got here, ladies and gentlemen? I was not expecting this to be today, considering, uh, well, it's Thursday, and the last time we had one of these was actually, I believe, last Saturday. But yeah, rec that's five days. You think that's a new record for the quick release time of these previews? Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day. Maybe a few ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Layback Gamer, and we are back with some more... Anomaly, Rim World Anomaly Preview Number Two: Containment Facilities, Creatures, and the Release Date. So first, let's get the release date out of the way. April eleventh, unfortunately, a Thursday. Yay! I wish they could re. I wish they could release these on Friday. That uh, that would be uh, that'd be very nice. But anyways, <coughs> let's go ahead. Today, we're talking about how you'll capture, research, and exploit the mysterious phenomenon formed by the enraged monolith's influence. You can build a grand containment facility with strong walls, floors, and doors to keep these entities locked up and study them fur to further your knowledge of the madness that's taken over the world. Exploit your chained horrors to use their powers against your enemies, but be careful not to push them too far. I'm getting a... Uh... This is kind of remind me of a... Well, maybe a bit more of a tame version of the Void now that I think about it. Minus the, uh, overpowered weapons, armor, limbs, implants, and creatures that could probably kill you with a single swing of their fist. Or stomp of their leg. Anywho! Capture! They're starting off with shamblers, which look to be this game's version of the undead. First step is to work out how to take down and capture these entities without killing them. Most straightforward... Entities are the walking corpses known as shamblers. Dead life dust is a corrupt cloud of arcanites that raise any corpse. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I got something stuck in the back of my throat. That raises any corpse that settles on as shamblers, repairing their rotting bodies for a time. It's similar to the old Resurrector ser Mech Serum, but far more twisted. Yeah, I can see that from the looks of it. So, it uh, kind of makes storing well makes burying your colonists a bit risky you're better off either letting the well even if you let if say you just got raided but had a huge raid and you're waiting for the bodies to decompose to decompose and say a pile up or <clears throat> i guess to sum it up it makes it much better that you incinerate the bodies whether that be through uh, I think uh, the cream, the crematory, cream, cremate, or whatever that machine's called that you can cremate bodies with, or by some good old-fashioned Molotov cocktails. Dead life works on all kinds of creatures, even your own dead colonists and beloved pets, but it doesn't last forever. In a few days, the Arcanites run out of power, and the Shamblers returns to death. Colonists can weaponize dead life dust as mortar shells and IEDs. Hmm. Little bit of uh, necromantic cut in a way. How uh, how devilishly evil. Chamblers created this way will not attack your colonists, thank you, which means a battlefield of corpses can suddenly become a gruesome weapons for your colony. Now, I could just imagine that if uh, you happen to have, say, in a kill box, or you have the bodies from a recent raid in there. And you set off an IED chain that just explodes these Arcanite dust into the air. And now suddenly, the, in addition to turrets, the enemies are also going to have to fight up against these walking shambles. Which probably are not very... Well, I imagine they'd be pretty easy to take out. Eh, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways. Uh... The shambling dead you encounter will attack all living creatures relentlessly and their immunity to pain makes them difficult to kill. However, that resilience is useful because you want to take because you want to take one alive. Working to incapacitate one by firing hit or hitting it with a blunt weapon, and you can move on to step two contained, which is described further down. I guess before we get into that, we'll uh, go for the revenants next. More difficult to capture is the revenant, a psychically invisible human hunter that alters that alternates between hunting people and hiding in its lair. <coughs> a 
The name Revenant comes from an old Outlander tale about an evil specter that haunts a village and every night rips a victim's soul from their body. It leaves them vac it leaves a vacant body behind, keeping the soul enslaved in its own personal hell. Alright, I like this. This is where the uh, the alarms that we saw in the previous uh, in the previ in the first announcement come in. And I think that's uh that's the IED right there that they were talking about for these clouds. Yeah, I think that kinda looks like it. Also that's nice uh, scratch marks there, maybe created by the Revenant. Revenants can use psychic influence to appear invisible and enter your colony unseen. Once you get a hold of a colonist, they can hypnotize them into an endless light nightmare. The Revenant will return again and again over time, hypnotizing people one by one until it is stopped. There are ways to track the Revenant. If you damage it, the creature may leave behind chunks of its flesh, which can be studied to improve your tracking. It can also be detected by proxi proximity alarms, and its invisibility can be disrupted when you hit it by EMPs, explosions, fire foam, fire, or special biofarite disruptor flares. Alright, so that's what these things are, the biofarite disruptor flares. We saw this photo in the first one. And they got, again, they got some interesting ba packs on their backs. I still think one of the... I still think it'd be cool if one of these was like a hemogen tank that carries on your back. Again, you sacrifice if it, it requires more hemogen in order to keep your colonist going. But it's useful in the heat of battle, as in it'll pump it right into your colonists, into your Sangavage's body. That's pr I think that'd be pretty cool. And again, we also have the human with the uh, the clearly brain operated. I don't know if it's a. It, I'll, hmm, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen a colonist that I've done brain surgery on. Eh, it might actually be that, or it could be something brand new to the mod. <coughs> Anyways, after each hypnotic attack, the Revenant needs to sleep. Take this opportunity to form your hunting squad, find its lair with it, it, while it hibernates, and attack it before it wakes. Oh, very nice. And then we have the Metal Horror Infestations. Someone is infested. Someone is not who they seem, but who? And here's the game of Among Us you get to play. <laughs> Metal parasites. Metal horrors are parasitic creatures that control their hosts with filaments spread throughout their nervous system. They imitate their host's behavior near perfectly, manipulating them to find opportunities to secretly infest other colonists. Oh, also, that's kind of reminded me of the thing quite a bit, too. I'm not sure why I didn't uh, draw that conclusion when we first heard about them. As they multiply and grow in your colonists, they shed fleshy gray tissue, liquefied remains of their victims. If you can find this tissue in your base, it's time to... <coughs> Excuse me. If you find this tissue in your base, it's time to become suspicious and afraid. Ooh, yeah. Who could it be? Who is infested? Which one of these guys among us is the perpetrator? There may be, there are many ways to identify the infestation. Analyze the gray flesh you discover to identify the metal horror's host, then perform surgical tests on your colonists, but can you trust your doctors? You could quarantine colonists in their rooms to see who the flesh comes from, or imprison and, and interrogate suspects to see if, they, if they're giving a, if they, if they give anything away. Of course, all this takes time and the infestation could be spreading. Alternatively, if you have your suspect, if you have your beliefs on who is infested, uh, you could always uh, imprison them behind a wall until they starve. I think that's one way to get this thing to come out. If detecting the metal horror will cut its way out of the host and attack, be careful when investigating, you may have a fight on your hands. So, are they still alive? Because it looks like it, this thing came out of... This one came out of here. This guy, I think, came out of him. And there might be another one coming up, coming out of uh, this guy. So, the question is... Uh, I, I'm guessing they keep the colonists alive, which is a good thing. Because, well, that would really suck to have... Your best colonist, you know, you put a bunch of implants into it. Actually, that's another thing. That's a, that's another thing. Can this, uh, can you have, if your colonist has enough implants, could this metal, uh, 
or not be able to affect it? That's an interesting question. Probably not the case, but... Ah, that, that's interesting, because one would think if they have enough implants in, in them, especially, say, a heart, like an architect heart or a bionic heart and the like, the metal horror probably wouldn't be a... I, I, I don't know how the... I, I'm just trying to think, because, again, it, it, if you take... This thing is, seems inspired by the thing, and, well, at least in the latest movie, it didn't seem to be able to really imitate metal objects that well, so I'm wondering if there may be a bit of that into this. Well, I'm a, well to be fair, this could also be a, more inspired by the alien. Like the chest bursters from there. I'm not sure. I, I just get major thing vibes from this. Anyways, the containment protocol. So, you've damaged an anomalous entity enough that it's incapacitated, and some of your colonists are still alive? Well done! Now you can contain it and experiment on it! Have one of your colonists carry the down entity to a holding spot. These primitive roped locations can briefly restrain the weakest entities. Have your colonists... Here your colonists can study them for uncanny research. I've got a couple of these other creatures here. I'm not sure what these guys are. It'd be cool to see what they get, though. However, if you don't actually if you if you don't actually want them to escape and tear your colonists to pieces, a mere holding spot won't do. Build a proper secure facility starting with a containment platform which comes with built-in restraints. You need one platform for each entity. I assume that this will only hold back some like these will only be capable of holding back some. I I imagine a cre like this sphere creature, the revenant, this uh undead thrombo looking creature probably won't be easily contained by this here probably won't very easily be held but it would probably hold the shamblers maybe even these uh, metal horrors but I don't think it would hold the biggest guys to prevent an escape a colonist can also suppress entities or build an electric inhibitor to suppress them automatically I think that, I guess that's what some of these machines are here. Maybe these things. I, I think these could probably be electric inhibitors. That would make the most amount of sense. Uh, anyways. Wise colonists also will, will also build separate containment cells, use special bioferrite flooring and walls that further suppress the creature. Kind of like dampening its... Well, honestly, a lot of these sounds like it'd be formed from Dark Arcanites. Which, again, I'm curious how that plays a factor into the lore. I mean, yeah, I guess there could be, like, Arca like, the Arcotex. Well, if we're, at least we're going by Vanilla Expanded. Or do you think he's even in base game? They are seen as, like, a godlike entity. So these dark Arcanites are probably from a dark Arcotech, which is the equivalent of a dark god. I wonder if you can summon one. Huh. You know, that would actually be a cool concept. You get enough of these together, you harvest their fluids and the like, you craft these items together, and then eventually you try to summon a dark god. Now, that could be interesting. Anyways, uh, be sure to lay out your containment facilities carefully. Keep an eye on each entity's suppression level. Have killing fields and layered defenses prepared when they for when they escape, because they will inevitably, and every containment plan is only as strong as its weakest point. Alright, kind of like a, an advanced version of holding slaves back, I guess. You can only keep them suppressed for so long before they try to revolt. Same thing with these guys, you can only contain them so much until they're able to break free. I'm guessing the stronger they are, the more likely they are to break free unless you have some massive things to hold them back. Research... Oh, I'm liking this so far. We'll see what this gets to. Research and harvest. Once an entity is restrained, a colonist can study it. To do this, you'll ensure... You'll need to ensure a colonist is assigned to dark research, a new research type. Very cool, as we can see here. This separate technology track gradually increases your knowledge of the dark architect behind this incursion. Alright, I'm pretty excited on that part. Uh, it also teaches you more about rituals, architect technology, serums, and weapons. Hmm. 
I'm liking the. I like how they have a bunch of this as unknown for the time. Unless, uh, unless you don't actually know this stuff, unless you encounter the creature, that could be an it. That's probably that's an interesting mechanic. You can't uh, study these unless you know the creature exists. So, for instance, if you have yet to say encounter the revenant, you wouldn't be able to study it anything about the revenant because you don't know it exists yet. I, that would be pretty cool. Only slight caveat is that would be cool for the first little while. Then afterwards you go, uh, Please just let me study this stuff. Although from the looks of it, from the looks of this research tree, each little bit here, uh, I, I, from the, this here, we break into this, I imagine these are the, like, the, the end points are probably creatures. Yeah, it looks okay. So the endpoints are creatures. So I suppose that's, uh, I suppose that's okay then. If it wasn't like I, I would, I wasn't sure if some of these were locked behind. Say you had to, I don't know, encounter a. Sh I, I can see it on here that you don't. But say you had to encounter a shambler, and study it before you could move on to say a revenant and then study that. But no, that's a good system as long as it's. You know, you have a few things, a couple thi basic things that you gotta study first, and then you can study each of the creatures, but it's not contained behind another creature, so you can't then go, you can't then, I, I wish I could study this revenant, but I need the shamblers in order to study it. Or I need to get the metal horrors, or the golden cube, or the ball, the ominous dark ball thingy up there. Anyways. I'm getting off track. That that tends to happen quite a bit in these, doesn't it? Oh, I, I'm already seeing down here, and I'm liking it, so I'm liking what I'm seeing. Each entity can also be harvested. Build an electro harvester to draw electric power from the entity. A bio a bioferrite harvester will generate organic metal, which can be used for la for la later power generation, sculpture, or outdoor heating. Or crafting at a new bioferrite shaper. Note that both of these activities increases the entity's rage, making it more likely to escape and take its revenge. Okay, so that's how these containment these containment fields would eventually fail. Creature gets so mad that eventually breaks free. I imagine the more powerful creatures. Again, I don't know what's the most powerful, but I would assume that the thrombo-looking, like, creature would prob probably be a fairly powerful creature. And obviously, this one looks like it would be very powerful, too. Not sure about some of the other guys, though. But anyways, I, ma I imagine they would take more or less in order to get this guy angry, but it does drop some really good, uh dark research points or, have, or materials that you can use to do research and whereas say a shambler probably doesn't need a whole lot like if you were to give well I, I assume one of this is let's see uh, I'm assuming these guys stabilize one of these here is a electro harvester and the other one is a bioferrite harvester it makes sense you would only want it one you'd only really need one of each of them because if you harvest it too quickly with multiple then the creature would break out fairly easy so these probably are what keeps them in check these two here are your harvesters and you harvest enough and eventually they break free or maybe if you give it enough time and you only like trickle harvest from them you can keep the creatures contaminated, or contaminated, contained, I wouldn't say indefinitely, but for a long period of time. Anyways, onto the more, onto the interesting stuff. Well, not that this stuff hasn't been interesting, but onto something else. Dark arts and crafts. Now that you have a, re a regular supply of bioferrite, you can have fun with it, if your idea of fun is, cre is creating impossible monsters and strange machinery we know ours is. If you build a bioferrite shaper workbench, you can craft new gear and weapons from the organic metal. These weapons include the nerve spike, a crossbow loaded with toxic spikes that stung the organic creatures, incinerator, a terrifying flamethrower with a alternate fire mode that produces a giant gout of flame, shared by the Hellcat assault rifle, 
Dead Life IEDs, Mortars and Packs, distribu distribution packs that allow you to raise families from nearby corpses. Okay, so maybe that's what uh, some of these packs are. Maybe that's what the these packs are. I still don't know. I, what are these packs? I would say this is probably the, de the Dead Life uh, pack there. But what are these? I'm so curious as to what these are. Th this one makes sense for the pack. Or even this, but what's the other one? I... I, I Maybe we'll get a little bit more in here. Bioferrite can be used to make psychic weapons with various effects, from diet, from driving enemies into berserk rage, to sending them into psychic shots, to biomutating them into flesh beasts. Other psychic pulsers can make every animal in the region either turn into a flesh piece or go into a man-hunting rage. Bioferrite is also crucial for making serums at the new serum lab uh, workbench. The serums include Void Sight Serum increases dark research speed at the cost of sanity. Ooh, is that a uh, is that a new meter that we have to measure, or is that just a status effect like oh you get minus five sanity, take some of this, oh now you get minus fifteen, etc. etc. Juggernaut Serum increases strength, speed, and recovery time. Metal Blood Serum makes a person resilient to damage but vulnerable to fire. Mind Numb Serum. Deadens emotions, prevents mental breaks at the cost of stopping inspirations too. Honestly, that one, not a big loss. Especially if you don't really care about inspirations. I think the mind numb one is pretty good. You know, never your colonist never gets inspired, but if you don't really complete inspirations, then it's honestly not a bad not a bad loss. It'd be that's a pretty good effect. Use bioferrite. Human using bioferrite, humans can surgically, irreversibly transform into ghouls. These are mindless, flesh-craving creatures and fearless combatants who can be who could and be augmented with a variety of dreadful implants. Ghouls will be discussed in a future blog post. All right, so these look like the ghouls here. Maybe, uh, maybe this person up. Here, maybe it's a process. Because I'm wondering if Fev here is a ghoul as well. And he's just slowly turning into one. That would be interesting if your colonists slowly turn into ghouls over a period of time. And this is just like a, like say, a stage one of the ghoul. And then down here you got a more advanced stage of these ghouls. So that's quite interesting. And obviously if they have a craving for flesh, then the flesh beasts also have a bit more of a purpose here because now the... Hmm, that's interesting. Would you then want to keep a the flesh beast infestation on your map if you have ghouls? Because arguably, you can then harvest them uh, if you can build a kind not 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 this kind of containment up here, but if you can build like a say uh, you had a middle here made out of the flesh walls. Uh, if you would have the outside with turrets and the like. In order to contain any flesh creatures that come out, you would effectively have a, a free supply of uh, fleshlings. Which, eh, yeah, I could see that. Anyways, to come, we still have more horrifying reveals to come from Anomaly, and April the 11th is only two weeks away. So, I'm pretty, again, I'm very interested to see what else they got cooking up for us and to see what else they're talking about. Obviously, we can see by here that there's still a few more things to come. For instance, you got this massive wolf rat creature here. It got, uh, I don't even know what this thing is. Maybe it's a different type of ghoul? I don't know. Because you got, like, again, that, that looks like a ghoul up there. And that maybe, uh, I'm gonna consider blowing up the screen, but maybe not. Uh, yeah, you got more ghouls here. So what is this creature? What is this here? Obviously, it's friendly. It's a colonist. Well, a former colonist, I should say. So what's going on with him there? And then you got this creature here. Uh, but I can't... I'm pretty sure that's something coming out of its forehead there. So clearly, these, uh, clearly there's a bit more to the ghouls than one may think. Or than it initially than it seems at the moment, but we'll figure all that information out next week. So far, I'm liking this. I'm liking this quite a bit. They've definitely, uh, 
I've been thinking this out, and again, I'm not sure if this is necessarily... This last serum just seems really, really powerful. Like, the ability to make sure for your colonists to essentially no emotions, which if you're playing, like, single-run colonies, that's fantastic. Like, you don't have... It's fantastic. You don't... It, it, you're never going to have anybody if you're doing a one-man challenge. Mental breaks. That's a big... Preventing mental breaks, that's amazing especially for your key colonists like say your crafter or uh your mechaniter or sangophage and the like like i'm listing that you're more powerful cat you're more powerful colonists or even from modded stuff too like say you have something from vanilla expanded sidecasters you have a powerful sidecaster that has a few different trees now he doesn't you don't have to worry about him ever going into a mental break Combine that with some genes from uh, some of the ge a couple of the genes from biotech, and got yourself a pretty terrifying colonist. I think a, again, like a sangophage. I don't believe. Do they have to sleep? I don't think they need to sleep. Though so they don't need to sleep. Combine that with never ever mental breaking, and you got a colonist that, as long as you provide them food and recreation around the clock, you're pretty good. Uh, oh, and I'm also thinking, just in addition to that, if you, again, had Psycasters expanded, you could use the uh, Archon tree, mentally break them. Now they don't have a recreation, though that's a bit of a cost of... Uh, they can't do much, but if he's just supposed to be a defender... Hmm, yeah, that... And then to feed them... I don't know what mod adds it in, but there's a mod that has a... Uh, I forget what it's called, but essentially it sets the need for your colonists to have, require food at 0%. Which would mean that, theoretically, with that combination of stuff, you could have a colonist that could be drafted, he would stand there and never suffer mental, never risk a mental break, never having to eat, never sleep, never recreate. Effectively, a colonist that would never ever have a reason to move from that spot unless you told him to go somewhere else. Which that, uh, hmm. That kind of worker is honestly quite terrifying. That in itself is an abomination that I think would have to be locked up in here. Anyways, I've dwelled on these my thoughts for a while now, and I'm sure you guys don't want to keep hearing me drone on, unless you do, in which case, I'm touched. But anyways, that's all for now, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, April 11th is the release date for Anomaly. I'll definitely be playing it, hopefully night of, but also ideally over the weekend as well. We still got two more previews left to come out. And since it's two weeks away, I imagine we'll probably be seeing this... Uh, I'm gonna, gonna hesitate to say we're gonna see this when Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, and then this one... A uh, few, maybe even the weekend. Yeah. Uh, not this weekend, but the weekend before Anomaly comes out. So yeah, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. I've been the Layback Gamer, and as always, until next time, take it easy.